Um, so this lesson, we're going to talk about plant tissues. Okay. Uh, what do I mean by plant tissues? The different components of the plant. We're going to talk about the root and the shoot. And also the different types of plant tissues. Uh, we talked about the animal tissue, like epithelial, uh, muscle, connective, and nerve. Plants don't have that. Plants do have epithelial tissue, but they don't really have the other ones. So we're going to learn about the different plant tissues, dermal, ground, and vascular, and finally, the meristematic tissues. So we're going to learn many different aspects of the plant. Um, in this class, it's mostly going to be physical, okay, what makes up a plant. Uh, so starting with this, so a uh, quick question. What do plants need to do, and what are some features of plants okay when you think of plants what comes to mind how would you describe it if, um, someone tell me either in the photosynthesis photosynthesis that's very good so plants they do this very unique thing um, to plants and some bacteria photosynthesis okay they don't need to eat because they make their own food and uh, what else what else do they do or you know what makes them special they're green. Good. They're green. Um, if you look at the picture, I just I chose four plants, um, and they all happen to be green. In fact, I could sift through all the plants in the world, and they're all green. They have to be green because in order to do photosynthesis, you got to be green. Okay, and exactly why we'll discuss later. Anything else? They're important for the world. They're important for the world. If all the animals die, okay, unfortunate, that's unfortunate, but the plants will probably be fine. Maybe with few exceptions, those that depend on animals. But if all the plants die, guess what? All the animals are dead because we need plants. Okay, We get our food mostly from plants. Uh, I know that a lot of people eat meat, but those animals that you eat, they eat plants. Okay, So in turn... We need plants, okay? So they're green, they do photosynthesis, and for the most part, cannot move. Some plants, it seems like that they're moving, like a Venus flytrap, uh, it does close in on the insect. Those are rare exceptions. Most of the time, plants are sessile, that means they just stay there. And they need to do the following, just like animals. Look, they need to breathe, gas exchange. They need to move water around this body. We move blood around our body. Plants don't have blood. They have water. And they need to re reproduce to make baby plants. Otherwise, they wouldn't be here. Okay, so that is really similar um, to animals. Okay, so the components of plants. Here is a typical plant, okay? And um, we divide it into two main systems. One beneath the ground and one above the ground. If you're beneath the ground, we call it the root system. That, that's it, just the roots. And if you're above the ground, it's the shoot system. Okay, And obviously, above the ground is way more complicated than just the roots. You can have like leaves, flowers, fruit, stem, and all that. So within the shoot system, uh, we have leaf, flowers, and stems. Okay, fruits are special on uh, fruits. You only get fruits if you've been fertilized. Okay, but the other ones you will always have. Oh, sorry, am I going too fast? Leaves, flower, and stem. We're good. So the root and the shoot. Root is extremely boring, just the roots. The shoot has those three. Okay, so let's talk about the root. Um, the roots of plants, they serve very important functions, and there are different types of roots as well. So some roots, well, actually um, all roots, they anchor the plant. Okay? You have difficulties uh, removing a tree because it's deeply rooted. The trees don't tip over because they have roots, so they act as anchors. Also, there's water in the soil. And when you water the plants, you put water in the soil beneath them so that the roots can then suck them up 
and then the plant will be hydrated. Okay, and also if you have a large root like a carrot, on the right uh, figure C, you have carrots. We actually eat the roots, um, the leaves and the stems. We just get rid of those are the green stuff we cut off in the kitchen, and we eat the root, like radishes, uh, carrots, uh, taros. Those things are all roots. They're big, so because they store nutrients, and that's the reason that we eat them, because the plant, well, these ones, their idea is to put all the good stuff into the root to store them. So roots have three functions, to anchor, to absorb water, and to store. Okay, do we have any questions so far? All right, so in the picture A, B, C, it, it kind of shows all three functions. In A, that's anchoring. In B, there's lots of water. In C, well, there's carrots, which are roots that stores energy. Okay, so... The shoot system has three components, leaf, flower, and stem, and they all have a function. The leaf is responsible for photosynthesis. Leaves are green, okay? And because there is something inside of a cell, the chloroplast, that is responsible for photosynthesis and chloroplasts are green, which makes leaves green. Okay, they have to be green, otherwise they don't have chloroplasts. They're not doing photosynthesis. What did the flower do? Now, why do plants have flowers? Anyone? What's the point? So not all plants have flowers, by the way. Um, those that do have flowers, why do they have it? What does that contribute to the plant? To pollinate. So pollinate. And what is the purpose of pollination? To reproduce. To reproduce, exactly. Uh, uh, flowers typically look pretty, okay, and they smell good because they need to attract other animals. Okay, and only if you're pretty, if you stand out. If you're a green flower and you, you're in a field of grass, uh, we're not going to see you. Okay, so that's why flowers typically contrast with green. And they smell good so that things are attracted and they, they basically hire animals to help pollinate other plants so that they can reproduce. So that's a reproductive organ. Okay. And um, the stem that stick in the middle that makes the, uh, the plant stand up. That is basically its nutrient transport. You need to get nutrients from the roots where it is sucked up all the way to the top of the plant and it has to go through the stem and of course the stem will hold and support the plant. Okay, does that make sense? So these are the, these are the primary uh, functions of these components, the leaf, the flower, and the stem. Okay, we're not going to talk about the fruit in this class. In the next class, we'll talk about fruits. Okay, so we're now going to talk about tissues. Like we learned about animal tissues, now plant tissues. This is a little bit harder to learn, mostly because you probably never heard of these ever. Okay, at least with animal tissues, you've heard of what a muscle is. Okay, you know what a nerve is. But plants, unless you read up on it, it's not a common thing for people to just casually bring up in a conversation. So let's start with meristematic cell. Like right off the bat, the word meristematic, um, I'm willing to bet that most people don't know what that means. It's a very specific word. It refers to plant stem cells. Okay, so we talked about stem cells, uh, animal stem cells. They have the ability to become any cell, hence stem cell research. Plant, um, they also have stem cells. Um, we call them the meristematic cells. Um, they're found in very specific locations, like at the tip of a root. These cells are the only cells in a plant's body that grows. Okay, plants will only do mitosis, that is cell division, 
if you are a meristematic cell. All the other cells, they don't do mitosis anymore. So the plants can only grow where they have a meristem. If you remove the meristem, they no longer grow. Okay. And the meristematic cell, just like animal, uh, uh, just like animal stem cells, they can become any type of cell in the plant. Okay. Yeah, I see you, Cameron. All right. So when these cells divide, a new baby cell is born, mitosis. They will elongate. That means become longer, and they pick. The major, they pick a path in life. What do you want to be? Dermal, ground, or vascular. Those are the other three types of tissues. So meristematic cells, they pick a field that they want to specialize in, dermal, ground, or vascular. And within them, they can become all kinds of cells, like epidermis, photos, uh, photosynthetic cells, a cell wall, a xylem, and phloem. All of these we will learn uh, in this class. So the point for this slide is to know that meristematic cells are the stem cells. They can become anything, okay, dermal, ground, or vascular. It's like English major, math major, or, I don't know, science major, business major, that. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, awesome. Uh, let's move on. So we're still on meristems. Now, there are two types of meristem. I said that only in very specific parts of the plants do you have these meristematic cells. Okay, Where exactly? Well, at the tip of the plant. The roots, if you look at the picture, underneath the ground, those orange dots, those are the root tips. Roots can grow because they have those little orange tips. Those are the apical meristems. Also, the buds above the ground, if you look at the shoot, look at all those orange spots, okay? Plants can also branch off. You can bud off with a new branch, and the tip of a branch also has apical meristem. So that's why plants can grow and become bigger. Now, if you chop off a plant down the middle, it's not going to grow taller anymore because it doesn't have a meristem there. However, within the shoot, if you kind of chop off the plant and look down, look at the cross section, you can see little circles. Those little circles are where the lateral meristema. So those are also meristematic cells. They can also grow, except they don't make the plants taller. They make them thicker. Okay, so think of a tree. A tree can grow in height. It can get taller because of the apical meristem near the top and the roots. It can get thicker as the trunk grows inside because of the lateral meristem. Every year they build one more layer. Next year they build another layer so until they get big. Okay, so these are the two types of meristems. Uh, those are the only cells in a plant that grows. Okay, any questions about meristems? Okay, so that's it for meristems. That's the first type of tissue that we learn, basically the stem cells, okay? These meristems will grow up to become one of three different tissues, okay? Now, here is where things get really messed up because none of these words are familiar. Dermal tissue, vascular tissue, and ground tissue, okay? You need to know what these are and what they do. Dermal, um, a dermatologist, that is a skin doctor. If you have like a rash, you go to a dermatologist. They check out your skin. Dermal means skin. Plants have skin, okay? Dermal tissue are, well, the skin system. If you look at the picture, um, there is a cross section of a leaf, a cross section of a stem, and a cross section of a root. The outside of all three, that green thing, that green skin that covers everything, that's the dermal tissue. Okay, dermal, dermal means skin. It does the same thing that your skin does. Protects the plant, keeps water from leaving. Okay, that, that is the easiest one to remember because we, we are familiar with the word dermal. Uh, vascular tissue, um, that is the stem system. Okay, 
here's a word that you might know cardiovascular cardio means heart if you go to the gym or you get on the treadmill you do some cardio i mean you run it's aerobic you need oxygen you need oxygen a lot so cardio means heart cardiovascular um th that refers to your heart and your your veins your blood vessels okay the vascular system of a plant are the equivalent of a human blood vessel the arteries and the veins plants also have those except instead of blood they have water so the vascular system are the veins that are responsible for conducting material up and down the plant deliver water and nutrients everywhere just like our own cardiovascular system okay and if you look in the picture in red in the cross sections are the plant vascular tissue okay and you, the patterns are different for our, our stems and roots just keep that in mind now stems usually have little dots and a root has one concentrated thing in the middle the third type of tissue would be the ground tissue the ground tissue is everything else uh, in other words, others, miscellaneous. If you're not vascular, if you're not dermal, guess what? You're ground, okay? And they, they, they make up the rest of the plant, and they do everything else. Um, is the xylem and phloem part of the vascular? Yes. Okay, the vascular tissue um, has xylem and phloem, just like humans, our, our circulatory system. We have both arteries and veins, kind of similar. Uh, same idea okay so again ground tissue is everything other than the vascular and dermal and they do everything else so that one is the hardest one to remember because it doesn't really have one specific function it has many functions okay so do we have any questions regarding the three types of tissues dermal the skin vascular the blood vessels ground everyone else Okay, I'm not seeing any comments, so let's move on. All right, so let's look at each of these in detail, um, starting with the dermal tissue, the skin. Well, what is there to say about the skin? Well, you may have noticed that there are typically two types of plants, once with wood and once without wood. Okay, if, if you pick a flower, the flower doesn't have any bark on it. Okay, it's perfectly green. And let's say a leaf, it doesn't have any wood on it, right? Now, if you're a green plant, if you're non-woody, like a rose or a dandelion or, I don't know, vines, then you have the epidermal tissue or epidermis, the skin, okay? That's a dermal tissue for green plants. If you're not green, if you have wood, that means you have bark, then you have a paraderm that's the skin of a tree trunk okay, the bark is the paraderm so know the difference between epidermis versus paraderm okay does that make sense if you're green it's epidermal tissue if you're wood you're paradermal tissue okay now what does the dermal tissue do many functions and one of them is to keep things out and to keep water in if you look at a leaf okay um we don't really have leaves right now because it's winter time but when it when spring and summer comes go check out the leaves it is quite waxy okay it's as if someone coated the leaf with a layer of wax it's kind of shiny well, that's because there is a piece of like, kind of like a wax on the leaf. It has a waxy cuticle to prevent water loss. It's like someone laminated the plant with a piece of plastic. If a piece of document is really important, you get a laminated, like your driver's license. It has a piece of plastic on it so that when it gets wet, it's not just a piece of paper. It's waterproof. Okay. Canadian money is waterproof. It is nice and laminated. It's not like American bills where it's made of paper. Canadians are kind of plasticky. Again, for that reason, it's harder to rip. And water keeps 
Oh, so plants have that to prevent water from leaving the plant. It traps the water inside the leaves because plants need water. Okay. And also, um, if you look at the picture to the right, some plant needs defense. Okay. If you're an animal and a wolf is trying to eat you, you can do many things. A, you can run. B, you can fight. C, you can hide. That's basically it. Um, you can try to fend off the attack using whatever strategy you deem um, to be appropriate. If you're a plant and a goat is trying to eat you, you can't run. You got nowhere to hide because you can't move. And you can't exactly fight the goat. You see what I mean? So what do you do? Okay, a goat is too big. Um, oh, okay, try and think of like um, a caterpillar. That's, a caterpillar is a huge threat to plants because caterpillars, they're born, they do one thing. They eat. That's it. They don't do anything else. They eat 100% of the time until they're full. They make a cocoon and become whatever. Okay? Plants don't like that. Uh, plants don't appreciate caterpillars munching on their leaves. They can't exactly tell it to, hey, man, can you, can you stop that? No. Instead, plants also need a defense. One of the defenses that they could do is produce trichomes. Okay, they can either produce hair-like substances on leaves or sticky substances on leaves. So you may have noticed on some leaves, it's hairy. Why are leaves hairy? For this reason. Um, if you feel those leaves, it kind of feels nice on your hands Well, because you're a big creature. If you're a tiny bug, like a caterpillar with like soft belly, and you try to crawl on that leaf like this, then those hair are like needles. They will pierce through the body, killing the caterpillar. Okay, that's defense. Or if you're sticky, like in the picture here, they will literally stick uh, to the bugs and they're stuck and they're dead. So these are defense systems. There are other types of defense, but that's not the lesson. We're talking about the dermal tissue, and that is one cool application of the dermal tissue to protect the plants from being eaten. Okay, do we have any questions? Okay, so let us move on to the next part of the vascular tissue. So we're done with the dermal. Next up, the vascular system. As mentioned earlier, um, there's something called a xylem and there's something called a phloem. Okay, these are the two different types of vascular tissue. In humans, we have arteries and veins. Okay, arteries carry blood away from the heart. Veins carries blood back into your heart. So two different types of tissues, of blood vessels. Plants have two different types of vascular tissue. The xylem, what do they do? They transport water and dissolved minerals, like calcium, sodium, magnesium. So if you're dissolved in water, plants will suck it up and pass it through the xylem. Okay, the xylem only goes up because water is in the soil. If you're at the tip of the plant, you need that water, water goes up. Okay, that's the xylem. And by the way, xylem cells, um, they are dead. Okay, they don't need to be alive. They're just a tube. Phloem, on the other hand, they also transport water just like the xylem, but they transport food. Okay, they transport sugar. They transport hormones because plants also have hormones. They can go up or down because food needs to be spread out everywhere and hormones need to communicate up and down the body. So a phloem transports both uh, water, hormones, and food. It goes both ways. Um, phloem cells are living cells. They are not dead. Okay, so that's the difference between xylem and phloem. Please know the difference. Xylem, dead cells, transports water and minerals up. Phloem, living cells, transports water, food, and hormones up and down the plant. So please make sure you know which is which. There are two types, just like arteries and veins. So any questions? All right.
right? So yeah, this lesson, there's actually not a lot of difficult concepts to understand. It's mostly just memorizing. Last type of tissue would be the ground tissue, okay? The ground tissue, I said before, is the filler between dermal and vascular. If you're not dermal and you're not vascular, you must be ground. And they have many functions because there's the, it's a miscellaneous classification. One of the function is photosynthesis. Okay, the photosynthetic cells are in the ground tissue because the vascular tissue, they have a job. They need to transport water. The dermal tissue, they have a job. They need to protect you. So the ground, well, you make the food. They also store stuff. If you make sugar, you are stored in the ground tissue. Okay, and they also provide support for the plant. Basically, they do everything. Okay, so photosynthesis, storage, and support, those are the big three. And if you take a cross-section, the ground tissue is between um, the skin, the dermal, and the veins, the vascular. Okay, so far so good? Okay, so we've talked about dermal, vascular, and ground. I know initially it can be very confusing to remember which is which. Um, just, I'm sorry to say that I, I don't have any tricks for you to remember. I just straight up remembered it because I, I looked at it too many times. Uh, but within ground tissue, you have leaves. Okay, If you take a leaf, leaves are really thin to our eyes. But if you cut up a leaf and look... In between them, if you look at the cross section, it's actually pretty complicated. It's a few cells thick. Okay, so here's a picture of a cross section of a leaf. You can see the, all kinds of stuff in here. First of all, that red dot that stands out in the middle, that red dot is the vascular bundle. That What is the vascular bundle? It's the vascular tissue. It's the xylem combined with the phloem. That's the blood vessel. Leaves, they need water, okay? Those are the veins. Some leaves are veiny. If you just look at that the picture of the leaf right there, there are veins, that's the red stuff, okay? Those are where water comes from into a leaf. And then you can see the skin of the leaf, top and bottom, like a sandwich. You have these sausage-like structures. Um, they, they form like a hamburger around the leaf. Those are the epidermis, the skin cells. There's an upper epidermis, and then there's a lower epidermis, and they sandwich to make the leaf. Outside of the epidermis, you have that waxy layer of the leaf that makes it laminated uh, so to prevent water loss. The real messed up parts are those round pea pods like thingies in the middle. So these are the mesophyll cells, okay? There are two types. You can have a palisade layer and a spongy layer, okay? Do you guys see what I'm talking about? Near the top, like teeth, those are called the palisade mesophylls. Uh, a palisade, for those that don't know, is like a wall. If you build a palisade wall, you basically take a bunch of wooden sticks and you stick them to the ground to make a wall. That's a palisade. Sponges, well, you know what sponges are, the thing you do your dishes with, they have holes in it, like SpongeBob SquarePants. SpongeBob's got a lot of holes. They're called the spongy mesophylls because they have a lot of holes. Okay, why do they have holes? Because you need a hole for air to come in. You need air to do photosynthesis. And those cells, this palisade and the spongy mesophyll, they're responsible for doing photosynthesis, which is why leaves do photosynthesis. Okay. Near the bottom, you can see again some pores, some holes. Uh, we call it a stomate near the bottom. That's where air comes in. Okay, so leaves have holes near the bottom to allow air carbon dioxide to come in, and it allows oxygen to get out. Do we have any questions about the cross-section of a leaf?
Okay, fantastic. So speaking of photosynthesis, you guys need to know the equation for photosynthesis. Okay, by grade 10, this should be pretty straightforward. Water plus carbon dioxide plus sunlight, you need all three. You make glucose, that's sugar, and oxygen. Okay, and there is a chemical formula for that as well. Uh, you do not need to really memorize the chemical formula. Um, just know the word equation is enough because glucose, it, as you can see, it's a pretty complicated molecule. And we didn't learn enough chemistry uh, to talk about the chemical equation. Just know the word equation. Does that make sense? If you ever forget, guys, if you forget the equation for photosynthesis, use common sense. Ask yourself, what do plants need? If your parents ask you to take care of their plants, what do you need to do to them? Well, A, you need to water them or they, they die, they go dry. B, well, they need sunlight. You can't put them in a dark room. C, it also needs carbon dioxide from the air. Plants breathe in what we don't want. We exhale. We breathe out carbon dioxide. Plants inhale. Plants really dig that. Okay, so plants needs, uh, they need carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight. What do they produce? Well, you eat fruits, don't you? You eat plants. Well, you eat it because it produces glucose, which is a form of sugar. That's food. Plants need to make food for itself, and we just happen to eat it. And plants produce oxygen. Okay, Plants produce oxygen so that we can breathe it. And we breathe oxygen to produce carbon dioxide so the plants can breathe it. You see, we are eating each other's waste. So we're perfect. It's a perfect match. So plants and animals are like best friends because they got each other's back. Okay, so every time you forget, well, wait, what's the equation for photosynthesis? Just use common sense. What do plants need? What do they produce? Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so inside a cell, we talked about chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are only found in plant cells, okay, specifically in the palisade and spongy mesophylls. And those are the green stuff. That Chloroplasts are green, and that's what makes plants green. Those labels, you don't have to know them. Okay, um, do not worry about the intermembrane space, the outer inner membrane, um, thylakoids. Don't worry about those. That's for grade 12 biology. Um, this happens to be a picture that labels all of them. For grade 10, you don't have to know that. Okay, you just need to know what a chloroplast is, what color is it, what does it do? Okay, does that make sense? Chloroplasts are green because it has chlorophyll. And chlorophyll is green. So far, no questions. Well, I'm not getting a lot of questions today. Probably because this is boring as hell. You guys good? Okay. Let's talk about plant breathing. Because we talked about humans breathing, the, the animal respiratory system. Plants also have a respiratory system. They breathe. Uh, how do they do it? They First of all, they have a cuticle. They, that, that's the waxy layer. It blocks water from gas from entering and leaving. Okay, you can't breathe with that. However, on the bottom of the leaf, you have stomata. These are holes, okay, openings that can open up and close like this if you open air can come in air can come out if you close then air cannot come in and air cannot come out they're like the mouth actually they look like lips so these are stomata those are um the plural uh, stomate is a singular so they allow gas exchange those those lips uh, those are actually two cells um, they're called guard cells because they're guards they guard things from entering and leaving they open the gate they close the gate just like guards so that's why they're called guard cells when the guard cells are filled with water okay they close up 
when you're running out of water, no, sorry, um, I said the opposite. When they're filled with water, they open up. And when you're running out of water, you really don't want to lose any more water, then you close down. Okay, so that's how you control them. So these are the guard cells. They control the opening and closing of each stomate. Together, this allows the plant to breathe. Once the holes are open, air comes in. This mesophyll cells suck up the air. The carbon dioxide does photosynthesis, makes the sugar, carries the sugar everywhere using the vascular bundle. Okay, does that make sense? Any questions? Okay, fantastic. All right, so um, if you're a plant, you have a couple of problems you need to overcome. A is how are you going to get water? Okay, because that, that's what you need. You can't just walk into a lake and drink it. So you, you have to be situated somewhere near water. Well, that's kind of beyond your control here. Um, you're just hoping that it will rain. Okay, so that's one problem. Once you get the water, how are you going to keep it? Okay, that's another problem. Because humans, we tend to lose a lot of water as well, but we can always drink. If you're thirsty, just walk into the sink and drink water. Plants don't have that luxury. They, they can't drink. They have to wait for it to rain. So they can't afford to lose water. So how do they prevent water from exiting? Well, they have the waxy cuticle, that waterproof layer. They close their stomata if they don't need to open them. It's like you turn off your lights when you're not using it. You close your fridge door when you're not at the fridge. Okay, you don't want to keep it open all the time. That is extremely wasteful. Okay, so th the leaves would then reduce water loss that way. And also, when you suck up the water from the root, the xylem and the phloem are arranged in bundles. It's like they are wrapped together into one big blood vessel. Half of it is xylem, half of it is phloem. And they will run up the plant into the leaves so that water ultimately gets from the ground into the leaves, which are then used for photosynthesis. Okay. If you study this picture in blue arrows, it tells you the direction of water from the root to the tip of the leaf. And unfortunately, water can transpire. That means it simply evaporated from the leaves, which is why in the wintertime, if you look outside right now, you're not going to see leaves. Okay, You're going to see needles, those pine trees. Okay, those are leaves. But you're not going to see a regular broad leaf like that one because if you're a plant and you're that stupid to have a leaf in the wintertime, the air is very dry in the wintertime. It's going to suck out all your water and you will wilt and die. So that's why plants will lose their leaves in autumn so that when winter comes, they don't, they don't um, die because of dehydration. They don't need leaves in the winter. Okay, and then if you look at the black arrows, plants breathe out oxygen. And the red arrows, they breathe in carbon dioxide. So please make sure you know all this. And I'm going to move on to... Actually, that, well, that's it. This is actually not that long, but we learn a lot of stuff here. Okay, we learn the two systems of the plant, the root system and the shoot system. In the shoot system, you have flower... Uh, you have stem, and you have leaf. The root, the roots have three functions. Anchors the plant, absorbs water, and stores minerals and nutrients. Okay. The shoot has flowers, which is responsible for reproduction. More on this tomorrow. Leaves for photosynthesis, and stem for support, and water transport. Okay. And there are different tissues, meristems, they're like the stem cells. That's where the plant grows. And once those cells reproduce, they become all the other tissues, just like stem cells. There are three types of tissues, dermal, vascular, and ground. Dermal, they're the skin tissues. Vascular, they're the veins, xylem and phloem. And the ground tissues, everything else, photosynthesis, storage, and whatnot, and support. Okay, 
So um, I'm going to end this one right here.